You can now generate AI artwork of yourself with even more accuracy. Stick around and I'll teach you how to use a free and open source AI, better known as Stable Diffusion and Dreambooth, to create professional looking digital artworks in seconds. If you're following along with this video, I've left all the relevant links in the description below. First, we need to get our images. This time around, I've gone for 30 rather than 20. I got five shots of my whole body, and for the other 25, I did a mixture of close-up and mid shots. In retrospect, I think 20 images might have been enough instead of the 30, and I think I would have opted to go for more close-ups rather than mid shots. I always seem to get terrible results with the full body shots as well, so I'd almost be tempted to bin them off completely. If you've seen the other two videos in the series, you'll know not to cover your face. You'll also know that you want to show a variety of emotions, facing forward and then either side at a 45 degree angle. Now, there's an interesting feature with this new Dream Booth collab. You can actually train multiple people at the same time. So I've asked my good friend Johnny to send some pictures over. He's mostly voice acting for video games these days, so I thought it'd be nice for people to put a face to the voice. I've got all these photos in a one by one format already, but at 1080p. The AI likes to train with images that are 512 by 512 pixels. So I'm gonna drop these into this clever free online software to resize them. I've also left the link in the description below. You can also use this tool to change the aspect ratio if your pictures aren't already squares and once you've exported your images it's time to name them. Now you want the file names to be pretty obscure. This is just so the training data won't reference more things than it needs to. For example if I just put James as my identifier it would look to see if there are any other Jameses about and would train on them as well. It's a pretty common name so no doubt it'd mess up my training data quite a bit. So instead I've gone for PIC JMS. And for Johnny, I've gone for P-I-C-J-N-N-Y. As a likelihood of that metadata already existing is pretty low, so in theory, I should get better training data for taking that precaution. Once you have all your images, it's time to open up the Google Colab doc which again is in the description below. Now, as a precursor to all of this, Google Colab can be a little bit difficult at times. One of the issues you might come up against is it booting you out due to inactivity. To avoid this, just scroll about on the page or occasionally click on the tabs to open and close them. Because if you get booted, you'll have to start all over again. If you do lose access to the GPU that Google provides within the Colab, you'll have to go up to runtime and then disconnect and delete runtime. You'll then have to reopen the link and go from the beginning. So that's your warning. And with that said, click the first play button. You'll get this warning that says this notebook was not authorized by Google, which essentially says the notebook is being loaded from GitHub and that's fine, so click run anyway. It'll ask you to connect your G Drive account, so log in and allow the access. Once the green tick appears, it's time to move on to the next section. Click the little play button on setting up the environment and that'll install all the dependencies required to get this working. You should see a green tick on dependencies and Xformers when it's done. Now. You're going to make a Hugging Face account, it's pretty self-explanatory. Once you've made your account, you'll get an email with a link that finishes up the setup. After you've done that, click on the link below and tick the box to accept their licensing terms. Then go to Settings, Access Tokens, New Token, write the name of the token, it can be anything really, it doesn't matter. Change it from read to write and copy the token to the clipboard using the button on the right hand side of it. Paste the token back into the Google Colab doc where it says Hugging Face Token. Run that cell as well. Wait for the green tick and move on to the next section. Make sure that it says yes in the new fast method field and then give your session a name. Click the play button and wait for the green tick again. Next, you'll see the instance image. If you click the play button, it'll show you a new button called choose files. If you click on that, you can select all of your images. It'll take a couple of minutes to upload your images. Again, they have to be 512 by 512 pixels to get the best results. Then you want to set the training steps to however many images you have times 100. So I've got 60 here, so this number will be 6000. If you're only training one subject with 30 images, you'd put 3000 steps. It's worth ticking the save checkpoint tab as well, in case you end up overtraining. This way, you'll get a file every 500 steps. If you run into any issues, you can always go back and choose an earlier version. Just be aware that each instance saved will be about 2GB, so make sure you have enough storage on your G drive first, you can run into a lot of issues otherwise. Then hit the play button and let it do its thing. The more steps you add, the longer it'll take. 6000 steps took me about an hour and a half. Just remember, if you're inactive on the page you can get dropped, so scroll around the page every minute or so, click on and off the tabs. Don't let Google think you're gone, otherwise you'll have to start all over again. Once you get this little green text line, you should have the .ckpt file in your G drive. So navigate over to it, it'll be in fast dream booth and then your session name folder. 
You can even download this file to use within Automatic 1111 if you have it installed locally, and if not, I've got a tutorial playlist on how you set it up right here. But for the time being, let's continue to use Google Colab. Click the play button next to let's test the trained model. This will allow us to open the web UI interface, which we're going to use to create our images. We'll still be using Google's GPU, so don't worry about it if your graphics card isn't amazing. Then you'll see the running on local URL at the bottom when the test the train model section is finished. This URL will change to random names, so if it's different to mine, don't worry about it. Finally, the big blue click to continue button, and here you are. You have the same interface as Automatic 1111. I'm now going to put a prompt in using the identifiers to get some images. First, I'll try with me. Remember, you're going to use the photo file name you choose as the identifier. Looks like it's working. Now I'll try it with Johnny. Hmm. I don't think it's working too great with Johnny. It could potentially be because all of his images were took in one location without changing his clothing. People have flagged that in the past as a reason why they couldn't get good results. For the sake of the experiment, I'm going to dig a little deeper into this later in the video. But I think I can still get this to work with Johnny. It's just going to take a little more graft. Using my own local version of Automatic, I'm able to generate artworks with text to image. Using the 1.5 model from Hugging Face, I can then take those images into the image to image tab and drop these into InPaint, mask over the head, then I can swap back to my dreambooth.ckpt file, paste in the same prompt I used to generate the original artwork, but add in Johnny's identifier. Bring the sampling steps to 40, denoising down to 0.5, and the batch size to 8. You can even upscale your images to higher resolutions in the Extras tab. Just drop it in, choose how many times you want to scale it, set the upscalers to Lanxos, and hit Generate. Working from the web UI interface gives you a lot of control that you otherwise wouldn't have. I've actually set up a playlist of short, concise tutorials for people wanting to level up their AI art generation skills. And I'm also running a series called Prompt Gods that takes a look at some of the most used artist names within the AI art community as well. If those sound interesting to you, get subscribed, hit the notification bell, and I'll continue making the content. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a way of loading the 1.5 model into the Google Colab version of the web UI interface. I did try dropping it into the G drive folder alongside the train.ckpt files, but just had no luck getting it to load. So if you do want to get more advanced with this, the likelihood is you'll need to install Automatic locally. For those of you stuck using Colab though, I'll show you how I fixed these issues with Johnny's photos and then how I retrained his data to get it working. So it's my suspicion that there were a couple of issues with Johnny's trained data. I'm really starting to think that Dream Booth doesn't like the full body photos. So I'm gonna retrain without using those at all. I'm also gonna lower the amount of images to 20. I'm manually gonna edit the white balance of these photos because they looked a little too orange to me. I'm also going to soften everything up. I think these images are too noisy at the moment. When we do this, we do lose a bit of the sharpness, unfortunately, but it's okay, I'm gonna fix that later as well. I can't really do too much to change the location, but what I can do is change the color of Johnny's hoodie in a couple of these images. So we have some that are blue and some that are black for a little more variation. Then I'm gonna take all of these into Photoshop and use Smart Sharpen. This will bring focus back around Johnny's eyes, mouth and hair, while also denoising the background even further. This whole setup can be avoided if you make sure your images are sharp to begin with, lit well, and you use multiple locations and change what you're wearing in between photos. I'm now going to retrain this again, this time using 2000 steps. A part of me wonders if the 6000 steps in the previous training might have been too much. And now let's see the results. Yeah, these are coming out much better than the original ones. It's still taking a bit of prompt craft and a lot of emphasis on certain words using parentheses, but it's working 10 times better than before. Thanks for watching. I'm hoping this tutorial stays relevant for a little longer than the last one. I want to say a big thanks to everyone who subscribed. I spent about three years under 100 subscribers and within the last month you've pushed me to over 3000. It's been great motivation to get the content made in my spare time.